this threading stuff is hard and it gets confusing. So wouldn't it be great if we could just say, hey, you know what, cute? Take this function, go make it multi-threaded and give me the result back. I don't want to mess with any of this. That's exactly what Qt Concurrent does. So Qt Concurrent provides high level APIs and makes it possible, blah, 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 to avoid any of the low level primitives, which is where all of the mistakes happen. It let's you just focus on getting the job done. Now, I'm just gonna say it. I love Qt. I love, absolutely love their technologies. However, every time they make something simpler, they make it infinitely harder to understand and their documentation not super helpful. So what we're going to be focusing on is the Qt concurrent run. And in all fairness, this is a highly complex topic and this is not for the faint of heart. We're going to do our best to make it super simple. Their documentation is probably about as good as it's ever going to get. But if you're just like a little newbie coming in here, you can't really figure out what the heck you're supposed to do or even where you're supposed to start. And you're going to be here for a while. So the goal of this video is to say, hey, let's take one function, make it super simple, return a value, but make the whole thing threaded. So Qt concurrent high level threading, threads are complicated. We're going to do a folder counter. First thing we need to do is we need to include in our project the concurrent library. If we forget to do that, we're going to have a bad time because it's not going to know what we're trying to do. That's usually the first step where people screw up is they just don't include that. Now I'm going to, at the risk of making things super, super confusing, make a class. And we're going to call this file scanner. This is going to be a Q object. All right, I'm just going to put some includes in there. Q object, Q debug, Q file info, Q dir, Qt concurrent. Notice it's Qt concurrent. We're calling a whole library, not just a class, and Q future. So what are these little guys? So Qt concurrent is the library, or actually the framework for concurrency inside of Qt. And the Q future, this is literally a future value that we're going to get out of the concurrent framework. So whenever you see future, think of like the movie Back to the Future where Marty goes off and he does some things, but he doesn't worry about it because that's a problem for future Marty. So this is future us. We're going to get some sort of future value, hence the name future, from concurrent. So this would be our DeLorean, and this would be what we're going to get out of that. Whew. Super confusing. And we haven't even started yet. We're going to make a function called scan. And right off the bat, you're going, no, wait a minute. We said we were going to get some sort of value out of this. Well, we can through the magic of signals and slots. So we're going to say scan. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to say signals. I want void updated int count. And then for private, I'm going to paste that scan back in there, but I'm going to say perform scan. Now, signals and slots, you typically would not have some sort of return value. Well, we're not working with slots. We're working with a function. We want to take this function and make it threaded. And then we're going to say q int 64 m count. Realistically, we should also make this a qint64, but I'm going to just put it as an int for now. All right, so we have got constructor scan and perform scan. Now I'm going to copy this. I've got some notes off the screen here, so there we go. And we're going to do something threaded, and we're going to do something that could take a long time. Q 
Q future. So instantly, as soon as you see the word future, you should know that we're doing some sort of threaded operation. We're going to say cute concurrent, and we want to call run. And whoa, there is a lot of options for us to choose from. So really simply, we're going to say take the current object, call a function using a parameter, and this function, perform scan, is going to return some value, but we're going to do it in a threaded manner using Qt concurrent run, so it's going to be a future value of a type int. That gets really, really confusing. To break it down, Qt future says in the future we want an integer. Our future is going to be Qt go do something, make this thing awesome, this object, this function with this parameter, which is actually this guy right here. Now I'm going to grab this off the screen, paste it in. Simply put, the main thread is not blocked. We can do other things. We can do anything we wanted because Qt is off in the background making this awesome for us. However, when we say result equals future result right here, we'll actually, if the result's not ready yet, we'll block until it's ready. So we're going to get the result back from the concurrent thread. Seems confusing, but basically get a value in the future using Qt concurrent run, call an object's function using a parameter, in our case this guy, do some stuff, and then when we're ready, we want to get that result. Whew, man, that gets really confusing. But it's actually really easy once you do it a few times. And yes, there's a reason why we covered thread pools already, because you guessed it, in the background, this runs on a thread pool. So what's really happening is Qt Concurrent has the global thread pool. It's making a runnable for us. It's putting this on the runnable, running it, and then returning the value. It's actually really, really awesome. There's a lot more to it. It gets really complex under the hood. Hats off to the people who developed this. We're going to say value, zero. Honestly, I, I peeked at the code. I don't think I could have written something like that. It blew my mind when I looked at it. Some people out there, especially you C++ masters, are going to go, oh, it's super, super simple. And I'm just like, nope, it's not. So if the... I got a little ahead of myself, didn't I? So we're going to... See, I get to talking, and then I can't talk and type at the same time. So qdir path... Then I'm going to just say, if not exists, then I'm going to simply return a negative one and say, nah, if it doesn't exist, I don't want to worry about it. And what we can actually do, qinfo performing scan on qthread current thread, and you'll see that this is a pooled thread. We may comment that out because it gets super, super chatty. Q file info. This is where I'm probably going to goof up. I am not good at this part. So we're going to say dir entry info list. And I want to say, I can never remember this. I think it's qdir. I don't want to get the directory. I think it's no dot and dot. There it is. And we want to make sure that we are counting folders. So And that's a durs, not dir. Uh-oh, did I screw something up here? I told you I would. So Q file info list. Ah, it's not a Q file info. It's a Q file info list. There it is. Q file info list list equals dir entry info list. And we want to avoid the dot and dot dot. If you're wondering what that is, when you're in a directory, the first item is a dot, the second item is a dot dot, which means current and parent and we don't want to like double scan the current and scan upwards so we're going to ignore those and then we want to do only folders Whew. 
that part just messes with my head sometimes. And then we're going to say the value equal the list length, because we're just getting the length of that Q file info list. And then for each, super simple code, Q file info info in our list. And then we want to say the value. We're just going to recursively call this function and we want to say item file path. Ah, I called that info, not item. There we go. That should work. So basically, we're just recursively calling this over and over again. If you've ever done this on the main thread or the GUI thread, you know this could take a long time. It may make your application freeze, and some operating systems like Windows, I'm thinking of specifically, will you know say, hey, this application's not responding. Do you want to wait or close it or whatever? That's typically what happens there is when you recursively call a function that's going to take a long time. All right, so that is super simple, but it's also very cool. So we're saying, hey, this line makes the magic happen. This line gets the result back. We can do other things while we're waiting. And this simple little function is now threaded, running on a thread pool. Let's prove that. Let's see if we can actually break this thing. I'm going to do some copy and pasting. Q debug, Q file info, Q text stream, Q thread, and file scanner. This guy, I'm going to just because it's very simple code. Q string, get path. Really, all this is going to do is say open the standard input and then say give me a path, return the value. Grab some more code. All right, and then Q thread current thread set object name main thread so we can see the differences in the threads and then we're just simply giving this path. There's a much more elegant way of doing that. I just put it in there. I try to make this code newbie friendly so if somebody skips a few classes, they're not completely lost trying to figure out what all this stuff does. We're going to make our file scanner and last but not least, we're going to say fs dot scan and we're going to scan that path. Let's give it a good build, make sure we didn't goof anything up. All right, so what's going to happen? Program's going to run. It's going to say, give us a path. If we give it garbage, it's going to keep saying, give us a path over and over. Once it has a valid path, it's going to echo that path out. I should say info that path out. Then we're going to make a file scanner, file scanner scan. And it's going to say, hey, you know what? This could take a very long time, so I want to do this concurrently. Cute concurrent run is going to take this object with this function and a parameter, a path, and it's going to take this whole thing and shove it off into the thread pool. And when it's done, then we will have a future result. We can do other things. And at our convenience, when we're ready, we can say future result. And this will block if it's not ready. If it's ready, it's just going to hand it back immediately. Save run. Enter path. Let's enter some trash. Yep, sure works. Let's bring up an actual folder here. So this is my video recording folder. This is actually the video recording right now. These are the previous videos. I've got like Blender, CPP, some GitHub. I mean, these are all of the videos that I've recorded for you to me. I mean, this is a pretty sizable directory here. So I'm just going to right click, copy that path, and let's go here, paste. There we go. See how that is super, super cool. So let's scroll up. All right, scan on Q thread, main thread, bang. Main thread is free to do other things, and then you see, sure enough, performing on a pooled thread. And because this is going so fast and we aren't using other things, it's just reusing that same thread over and over and over again. But that's incredibly cool, and there's our end result. Now, you may have noticed right off the bat here, we have this signal. 
because we're using a command line application, this really isn't super helpful for us. It's not really doing a whole lot, right? But what we could do right here, if we have a GUI application, is we can emit this. And then this is super chatty, so I'm going to just comment that out. Save and run that again. Let's go back and get this path. Much faster, at least on the screen. It was about the same speed. But you can see just how cool that is. We can take an entire function, throw it out on the Qt thread pool, let Qt handle all the details for us, and we're just worried about that end result.